Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's lesson and meditation will be taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac by Torquem Saradarian, Volume 4, Chapter 29, titled Aquarius, Visions for the Aquarian Age. This chapter is beautiful because it outlines why and how we should have visions for our life. Usually Aquarius falls in the beginning of the year and this year we are going to think about how we pull together the entire 2018-2019 themes of Wisdom of the Zodiac and how those themes have helped us and will continue to help us to build bridges to our higher self. And vision plays an important role in that process. Let me begin by reading parts of that first paragraph on page 345. It is important to have visions. Okay, you're going to think, why is it important to have visions and what kind of visions do I need? This is why in the Bible it says, if you do not have visions, you perish. The teaching creates vision. So the teaching is always giving us that possibility of something beyond where we are right now. What is the vision? The vision is a magnet toward which you strive. Okay, you put something out and then you pull yourself toward it. Even if you do not want to strive, the vision makes you to strive. This is why it is very good to create visions. What you want to be in a million years, you are going to be because you created a vision. Always try to create a vision, not only within your heart, not only within the heart of your children, but also within the hearts of those with whom you relate. By increasing vision, you make life better. Before I continue with that paragraph, let me read some passages from the book, Creating a New Vision for Humanity. On page 16, it says, What is a vision? Vision is a symbolic image of your future, of the state of beingness of your future. So look at the words that he has chosen. It's a symbolic image of your future. What is the symbol of what you want to be? What, what does that look like? What does that feel like? So you can see immediately that a vision creates a picture of what you want and you're going to put the most beautiful picture, the most serene, the most sublime picture of yourself as an image of your future. It is the image of the process through which you pass to actualize your vision. So it becomes a process, it, can, it becomes a movement, an organic part of your life that pulls you. Do you see how it works? You create a vision and it doesn't just sit within you, it sits ahead of you, before you, as far back as you can imagine it is going to be. It is also the dramatization of an idea that opens in your consciousness a state of beingness which you try to achieve in the future. So it opens out a possibility in you and you say, wow, I can become that. And when, as soon as you do that, some components inside of you chemically start acting to have you and help you create that vision. You see, it is so important. Every time you see a vision, listen to this, your core aspires and strives toward it. What is your core? It is your soul, your human soul. That is you, your essence. Immediately when you articulate a vision, something inside of you is moving. It's energized. It creates heat. Every true vision is magnetic. It's going to pull you. And like a magnet, it pulls you toward itself. Slowly breaking your hindrances and attachments. So you see, having a vision is very important. It is not just making promises and New Year's resolutions. When you create a vision, it is something that is going to move you from inside. It is not just, I'm going to go on a diet, eat less, exercise. No, this is going to be something deep, something that your soul desires, aspires, and yearns for. So that vision then, you put up ahead of you, and you imagine going toward it. And you will see how slowly your hindrances and attachments 
are breaking down so you keep moving toward that vision. So create that vision. Read this beautiful book. Create a vision for yourself that is not limited by time and space. Let me reiterate that. Create a vision for yourself that is not limited by time and space. So for example, you are not going to say, today and next year I'm going to be thinner, I'm going to be more athletic, I'm going to read more. No. Create a vision that is deep in your soul. Next year, 10 years, lifetimes. Take it as far ahead as you can so that your soul, your essence, starts heating up and moving toward it. Okay? Let's go back to Wisdom of the Zodiac, chapter 29. Start on page 345. This is so beautiful. And it says again, it is important to have visions. So again, you're going to create a vision for yourself that is beyond time and space. And you're going to add something to that. Look at that. You're going to create a vision not only within your heart, but not only within the heart of your children, but also within the hearts of those with whom you relate. Okay, so your vision is not just me, myself, and I. I'm going to be wonderful, perfect, peaceful, energetic, and so on. No, you're going to say, I want this image for myself. I want this vision for my coworkers. I want this vision for my husband, my wife, my partner, my friends. I want this vision for entire humanity even. That's the keynote of Aquarius. Aquarius has a universal theme. And the universal theme is this, that you create a vision for everyone that is good for everyone. Let's go to the next page, page 346. What is Aquarius preparing? Okay, we're going to stay with that theme of Aquarius and creating a vision. Aquarius is preparing those people who are really going to enter into their intuitive awareness. That's you and me. That's people like us and millions of people all over the world who are striving to overcome their hindrances and to develop intuitive awareness. Very soon, the chemistry of Aquarius is going to be stronger and stronger as the years go by. It's going to be stronger and stronger to create that universal theme in our hearts and minds. Very soon, the chemistry of Aquarius is going to be stronger and stronger as the years go by, especially after 2025. Something will happen so that the chemistry of the Aquarius will really change our mental body and create a little bridge between the lower mental and higher mental planes and then to the intuitional plane. So in the next coming years, and beyond 2025, all of us, humanity, those of us who are thinkers and lovers of beauty and goodness and righteousness and joy, we are lovers of striving toward perfection. We are lovers of sacrifice and service for the greater good. We are going to see that our logical mind is going to be married to our higher mind, our mind of ideals. And then from there, we are going to be married to the intuitional. The intuitional means an overall universal look at how life operates and then making decisions in our life that fits that awareness, that universal awareness. Let's go to page 347. Our various kinds of thoughts, emotions and actions create a corresponding chemistry in our system. Just as the chemistry on Earth is the substantiation of the chemistry forming in space. So look at this. You and I create chemistry of change with our physical, emotional, and mental actions. Our thoughts, our words, our decisions make a difference. Just like in the greater scheme of life, our Earth is a result of the chemistry of space and the chemistry of humans and all of life living on it. So the conditions that we live in is a direct result of what we all do together. Let's go to page 349. The huge constellation Aquarius has millions and millions of stars. And all these stars are organized and aligned and synthesized, 
cooperating with each other in such a way that the whole constellation is sending one huge flow of energy to our earth. Okay, that whole constellation is sending huge flows of energy to us. When our solar system in 170 years enters totally into Aquarius, humanity will have a new psychology. Again, what is that psychology? It's the psychology of the intuitional plane. Look at the bottom of that page 349. What will happen if we enter into intuitional plane? It's not something we all want and we aspire toward and we talk about. Look what happened. The first thing that will happen is a tremendous feeling of inclusiveness. I think we are already seeing that. We are seeing how all of humanity is linked together through language, through social media, through laws and agreements that we have, multinational agreements, through the way our commerce and our financial system works. So that is already happening. That sense of inclusiveness is coming. Why would you travel anywhere if you didn't feel like there was something worthwhile there for you to see and to experience? So that is already coming. Those people who are separative or who want to live for themselves, by themselves, will be recognized as very backward people who are interested only in themselves and not interested in the whole. And we are already seeing that everywhere. The legal systems, the agreements, the social media is making us all really blend together and understand each other. Now this doesn't mean that all of us are under one legal system or all of us do one religious practice. Not at all. It means that we appreciate and we love the different forms of human expression, the different forms of culture, the different forms of language, the different forms of thinking and solving problems. All of us together bring that together and it becomes a really collaborative effort in all our parts to create a better world for everyone. Let's go to page 350 to change our consciousness and our whole being. Isn't that what this is all about? And to be part of a new race. Okay, that's a new consciousness, not just a cultural race. We're talking about a racial consciousness. We must think in terms of one humanity. I think all of us do that to some part. We think about it, we care about it. And this is coming more and more in the forefront building the bridge from our mental plane to the intuitional plane. Okay? There are three ideas that we must cultivate to do this. Let me take a minute now and re-emphasize what we are doing through the wisdom of the zodiac is we are building a bridge from our lower mind to our higher mind. That's the first step so that we start thinking more in ideals, more philosophically, more in the possibilities in life. Okay, those are the things that we are thinking. From there we are taking the bridge and throwing it to the intuitional plane and there it becomes more universal, more expanded, more thinking about the larger picture and not just us. Okay, how do we do this? Torquem describes three steps on page 350. Number one, we can understand truly that all separate interests are the source of pain and suffering. Okay, even in a family, you can consider it on a small scale. If one member of the family says, this is all about me and nobody else matters, everybody suffers. So in a family, in a group, in a business, we are asking now for collaboration, for cooperation, for thinking what's good for me and what's good for you, right? On a very simple basis. Look at the next one that we can understand truly what, that the world is one world. So we are seeing truly that the globe is one. And when we have astronauts going to the moon and to other planets and they take photographs of our planet, we really see there are no borders. There are no borders and boundaries between one nation and another. It is truly one world. So we are seeing this pictorially and in our minds and hearts. Number three, this is really beautiful. We can understand truly that all individuals have one root which is expressed as the souls of men and women are one. Their source is one. They come from oneness. 
they go back to unity. Oh, that is so beautiful that every day we say the souls of men and women are one. Now the whole theme of Aquarius is to develop a vision for our life. And our vision is going to be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, as far out as you can. And in order to be inspired to create a dynamic vision for yourself, I'd like you to read the eight visions that are given in these pages. They are beautiful, uplifting, and it'll give you an idea where you would like to go in your life. So before you observe the five days of the full moon, that is two days before the day of and the two days after, I'd like you to do the following. First thing, articulate what is your vision for yourself going forward. Don't just limit yourself to this year, next year, go five years, ten years even, and just put that out there as a beautiful rising star. In fact, imagine a star, a five-pointed star, and right in the middle of it, articulate your vision. And just hold that out for yourself. And then every day during the five days of observing the full moon, you're going to follow these meditations and think of obstacles that may come up from your heart, from your mind, from your emotions. And one by one, we are going to remove them. So every day when you do this meditation, you're going to start re by remembering that vision of yourself in that five-pointed star. Okay? So let's do this meditation and I will walk us through it. Meditation is given on page 356 to 357. Close your eyes and relax and let me see a big smile on your face. Your soul will guide you to the greatest vision that you want. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be daring. Daring and think big. Okay, Aquarius is think big. Water of life that comes to us and pours in us and makes us rise and grow. Okay, I want you to think of those beautiful images of Aquarius. Okay, keep your eyes closed. And first of all, imagine ahead of you, far away ahead of you, a five-pointed star. And see yourself in that five-pointed star. And create a vision for yourself. What do you look like physically first? and take it five, ten, maybe next lifetime even. Create that vision. Surround yourself with the kind of emotional body that you want. Even put a color on it. And then create a beautiful mind. And see your soul as a sparkling fire. What is the vision that you want for yourself? And hold that vision, that's step number one, every day of the five days. Hold the vision. Don't have it move. Now find three obstacles that may prevent you from being totally included in your vision totally involved in your vision five three to five obstacles put 
Keep that vision in your mind. Hold it in front of you. Now take those obstacles one by one and with your soul power coming from your vision, blow them up. Let them be incinerated and fall to the ground one by one. Imagine your soul fire as a beam of light, a laser beam. And refocus your mind in that five-pointed star as a shining, shining light. Now link up to your solar angel as you repeat after me. Lead us, O Lord, from darkness to light, from the unreal to the real, from death to immortality, from chaos to beauty. Repeat after me, let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We are going to say one ohm and always refocus your mind in the five-pointed star. Now in order to take that vision and make it universal, we are going to imagine millions and billions of people in their own vision, in their own five-pointed star. We don't want to prevent anyone from having that vision for themselves. And let us say together, the souls of men are one and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Take a deep breath and refocus. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Let us sound three ohms out loud or quiet and keep your focus on the billions of five-pointed stars. Now we are going to say the mantra, beautiful mantra you're going to repeat after me and consider that we are going to keep that focus, that energy of Aquarius coming onto the entire world and energizing us with visions for universality for the entire planet. Repeat after me, more radiant than the sun purer than the snow, subtler than the ether, 
is the self, the spirit within my heart. I am that self. That self am I. Let us close with one ohm. Let me summarize what we discussed and studied in this chapter. This chapter of Aquarius is all about creating a vision for the Aquarian age which is a process through which you build an awareness for the Aquarian Age, which is universal understanding of human rights, global rights, environmental rights, the rights of everyone to live a life of beauty, goodness, righteousness, joy, and freedom. Not only that, but the rights of everyone to link their lower mind to the higher mind and from there to the intuition. What does that do? It links all of humanity to the higher world. That is our vision. When you read the eight visions that Torquem describes in this chapter, you'll be inspired to see how life progresses year after year and how through that progress we build bridges to our higher self. Read those eight parts. Create a vision for yourself and every day of the full moon, five days, and if you want to stretch it out to seven or 10, or for the entire year, do that. Hold that vision of yourself in the five-pointed star, and don't limit it just for yourself, but for your entire family, your work and your coworkers, your group. What about all of humanity? Why not? Doesn't everyone deserve to build bridges to our, their higher self? Of course they do, of course we do. So hold that vision, and one by one, when you have obstacles, blow them out of the water, incinerate them with what? The power of your soul. Your soul has powers that you don't probably know about yet. And so use that power, and through that power, you're going to remove the obstacles, and your soul is going to pull you into actions and activities that will create that vision and make it a reality for you. All right, so thank you for being with me, and I wish you a fantastic building of your vision, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.